Okay, well, um, we're going to uh, review some of the concepts we need um, to do uh, the whirly gig activity. And I'm just going to draw a little sketch of what goes on in the whirly gig activity. And so what you've got is you've got, um, I'm going to give you a little PVC pipe. Kind of looks like this. Okay, there's the, the pipe. It's about a eight or nine inches long. And then uh, and then it's going to attach to a string. It's going to be this rubber stopper. And then this rubber stopper is going to go down like this and attach to it down here is going to be a 200 gram uh, mass. Now, if you just let go of the rubber stopper, the, the gra gravity will pull the 200 gram mass down and the this um, the mass of the uh, of 200 grams is significantly greater than the mass of the rubber stopper, so it'll just pull it until the stopper gets stuck um, in the hole right here. But if you rotate um, the rubber stopper, you spin it around. Now you're going to need a centripetal force in that string to keep that rubber stopper moving in a circle. And that centripetal force is going to be equal to the weight of, the, the, of this 200 gram mass. So this thing's going to go woo, 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 like this. You're going to spin it around like this. And uh, okay, so you're, we're going to use this uh, apparatus to figure out okay, what is the mass of that rubber stopper right there. So let's, um, let's review some ideas that we uh, started um, before uh, vacation. Um, uh, one of the things, let's describe rotation. If I have a circle and I have an object that's moving in a circle, which this is, so now we're just looking down on it. Okay, we want to be able to describe its motion with kinematics. And, um, and so we have a way of measuring where it is in an uh, angular sense. So if, if we're going to rotate this up from here to here, then this would be the angle theta. Now this is an arc length s. So that's the length of this arc right here. Um, and, um, and then if this is going to have a radius r. And, um, and so there's a relationship between theta, the angle, S and R, if you're, if you're in radians. And that is that theta is equal to the ratio of S over R. And of course, if, if the arc length is equal to the radius, okay, that would be like right over here, that would be one radian of angle. So the radian is a measure of angle, which is really what you're doing is you're, you're saying, how many radiuses <laughs> uh, is this, you know, if I wrap this around, you know, do, do I go? So um, this lets us figure out what the arc length is, if you know what R theta is. So we can rearrange uh, this idea here to do that. Now. If I want to know how fast it's rotating, um, I can say, well, um, uh, I can say, uh, well, delta theta over delta t, that is, you know, the rate at which I'm changing my angle, angle um, well, that's going to be equal to delta s um, over uh, delta T, uh, but you have this one over R left over here. So all I'm doing is divide, taking a change in uh, arc length uh, over a change in time, and that gives me an angular velocity. So this is going to be equal to uh, omega. We called uh, uh, this 
uh, omega. And what is delta S over delta T? Well, that's the distance over time. That's really my speed. Um, and if, if, we, uh, if we assume that this is moving with constant speed around here, like uniform circular motion, um, then that's just going to be uh, V, the speed, over R. So, um, so all of these are really important. This is really important. You can rearrange it to this, and then this is really important as well. Um, also, then you can figure out what, your, what the velocity is or what the speed is if you know uh, r and omega. So you have v equals r omega. And take a look at this. See this? And then you have this. See how similar it is? You have r times theta. Uh, r times omega, and then we're going to have r times alpha here in a second. Now, um, if I have a, a change in speed over time, I have a, um, uh, let's see, uh, change in my angular speed over a change in time. That's going to require a, um, well, um, I'm, I'm going to define this to be the angular acceleration. And we, we use an alpha for that. And that uh, angular acceleration is in radians per second squared, right? This is an omega is in radians per second. Um, th well, theta is in radians. Omega is in radians per second. And the angular acceleration is radians per second squared. Uh, because, yeah, so. Um, so this is uh, my angular acceleration. And uh, what I can do is I can say that this is uh, also equal to, um, uh, well, if I uh, look over here, um, if I say this is, um, well, delta omega equals delta V over delta T. Let's put a delta T down here uh, t uh, times 1 over R. Now here's where uh, things can get, con so this is alpha, this is our angular acceleration, but things get really confusing right here. Delta V over delta T. This is the, the rate at which I'm changing my speed. It does not include the change in direction of your velocity vector. This is strictly a change rate Am I still on screen? Yeah. Rate of change of speed. Okay. Um, so now um, for something that's moving in a circle like this, uh, we say that it's rate of change of speed. We call that tangential acceleration. So this is going to be equal to R. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Um, so this is going to be um, uh, the tangential acceleration. And I use a T subscript for tangential over R. So the, here's another you know, basic equation here, this kind of shows us the relationship between ten, uh, tangential acceleration and angular acceleration. Okay. Um, and, and so that's, that's kind of defines uh, our uh, angular. And then we have, of course, if we have uh, a constant uh, angular acceleration, you can use the kinematic equations. I don't really want to get into that right now, review that yet. But um, but this only uh, this really only defines the rate of change of speed. Now, I, I, we we also talked about the acceleration you experience if you change your velocity vector, if you change the direction of your velocity vector, and and in that case, uh, here just to review, uh, we if we're moving in a circle, and we have an object that's right here, and then we have an object that moves and it's r rotating around the circle here. Well, it's got a velocity like this, and then it's got a velocity. Remember, velocity is always tangential to the path. 
So this would be V initial, this would be V final, and this is R. And even if we're not changing speed, look what happened to the velocity vector. The velocity vector was pointed like this, but now it's pointed in a different direction. And so we had to change it. We had to, we had to um, change that velocity vector, the direction of it, and we do that with a centripetal acceleration. I'm not going to go through the whole derivation again. Please refer to one of my previous videos or somebody's previous videos uh, uh, to go to review that or read the book. But um, what we found is, is that the radial acceleration, or sometimes we call it the centripetal acceleration, these two things are the same thing, um, is equal to v squared over r. We derived that. Uh, the centripetal acceleration is equal to v squared over r, where v is my speed, r is the radius of the circle or the radius of the turn that I'm going around. What direction is the centripetal acceleration? Acceleration is a vector. It needs to have a direction. Now, tangential acceleration, this one, is always uh, tangent to the path. That's the direction of of the tangential acceleration. It can be uh, slowing you down or speeding you up. But what direction is the centripetal acceleration? It's towards the center of the circle. And so I'm just going to put, uh, did I go over r hat with you, negative r hat? I can't remember. I do that for my other class. Anyway, um, we're going to just say toward the center. Um, now, a way of saying towards the center and a shortcut mathematical thing is negative r hat. You might see that, but um, all right. So we have two different accelerations now. We have tangential acceleration, which is equal to r alpha. And then we have radial acceleration, which is equal to v squared over r. And these two accelerations are perpendicular to each other. Um, because if I look at this circle, tangent to, to the path and towards the center are always at 90 degrees. So if you figure out what this is, and you figure out what this is, you can figure, uh, if you can figure out the tangential and centripetal accelerations, they are like legs of a right triangle. And you can figure out the overall acceleration is just going to be the hypotenuse of that right triangle formed by these two components of the overall acceleration, the centripetal component and the tangential component. Okay? And um, so you use Pythagorean theorem, inverse tangent if you need the angle or anything like that. Okay. Uh, now, let's talk about centripetal force. If I've got something, uh, like in this case, moving in a circle, I need a force pulling on it um, and in this case, it's the tension in the string. And that tension is going to cause that centripetal acceleration. So we can say that um, the net force is equal to mass times acceleration. Well, in this case, is if the net force is the tension force in the string, you can say, okay, the, here's the, oh, wait, that's, sorry, wrong class. Um, the tension force in the string is going to be the force that's making it go in a circle. Equals m times a. Well, it, uh, this uh, for this, let's say it's moving with constant speed here. You're, you're moving around, whoosh, 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 whoosh. You're not speeding it up or slowing down. You kind of reached a, a steady speed. Well, that means that the acceleration then is not a tangent. There's no tangential acceleration. It's strictly a centripetal acceleration. So this is equal to v squared over r. So now um, uh, we have an expression that we can use for the whirly gig. This one right here. Now, one thing to remember also is that v, my speed, moving around that circle. Well, I'm moving in a circle, right? 
and speed is distance over time right distance over time well what distance does it go if it makes one complete circle that's 2 pi r and how much time does it take to go around once we call that the period so this is the radius, and this is the period. The period is the time it takes to go around a circle one time. Is that clear to everybody? Okay. So uh, now, in the Whirligig experiment that we're doing here, the question is, and you could write this down, question. Um, using the whirly gig what is the mass of the rubber stopper Okay. Now, in your uh, notes, here's what I uh, I want you to work together. I'm going to hand it out. You guys can can uh, um, use your. Uh, I mean, you can work together in your group and all that. But uh, procedure. I want you to write up a procedure. Um, and in your procedure, draw a sketch. And then write out the steps that you're going to use to um, figure this out. Tell me what you're going to measure. How are you going to measure it? What measuring tool are you going to use? Um, go, you know, go through uh, it in detail. What are you going to do? And if you want, you can leave space for it and then actually do the experiment maybe record some stuff on whiteboards or whatever in case you make a mistake or whatever and then when you're all done you can uh, fill out that procedure but this is what they're going to want you to remember on that, that practice ap problem we did they're going to want you to write experimental procedures so i want you to get used to doing that they're going to give you a problem like this on the ap test and they're going to say write a procedure using this equipment to determine uh, that okay so then you're going to need data and calculations. So what are you going to measure? Well, you need a place to record that measurement. So make sure it's nice and clear what your what what measurements you're making and what those you know measurements are. Uh, now you can figure out what you need to measure by looking at this. I mean, what are we trying to find? We're trying to solve for this. So we need some way to measure the velocity. Notice the velocity here can be uh, expressed in terms of the radius and the period. So you could substitute this in there. And now, um, you know, uh, and then you solve for what you're trying to find, right? We're trying to find the mass. Well, when you solve for what you're trying to find, you solve the mass, then you have what's left over that tells you what you need to measure. If we're solving for mass, we need some way of measuring the tension force in the string. Oh, look. We have the mass of this thing. And this, is, this guy is going to be in equilibrium. You can assume that the, um, that the tension, there are some simplifying assumptions we need to make. That, uh, that's another thing I want you to add is assumptions. One of the assumptions I want you to make is that the tension is the same everywhere in the stream. So whatever the tension is around here, it's going to be the same tension force there. Now another uh, thing to consider is, is gravity a significant force on the rubber stopper. 
um, if if this circle is really flat and almost level with the opening of this pipe on the top, then gravity can, you, we can assume that gravity is is uh, negligible. But let's say um, I'm running out of room on this paper. But let's say you do this. Here's your pipe, but your circle is really is is down like this. You know, it's circulating like this. So that you have a significant angle right here. Um, I mean, here this angle is almost 90 degrees. Here this angle is significantly less than 90 degrees. So if I draw a free body diagram of the rubber stopper right here, I've got gravity pulling it down, and I've got this tension force pulling it up, and then I've got this guy like that. So um, I think. For the purposes of this experiment, you we can avoid this by making this go pretty fast, and thus this angle being really, really um, uh, close to 90 degrees. Now, if you want to try to do this, the analysis of it isn't isn't that hard. It's a, it's a little bit more complicated, and then you're going to write a conclusion. And that is the mass of the um, rubber stopper was calculated to be this. But then what we're going to do is I'm going to, uh, when you're done and you have, uh, when you're done um, and you've made a prediction about your rubber stopper, what the mass is, we're going to measure it with the, um, with the triple beam balances. And so one thing I want you to do is uh, do a percent error calculate. So in the conclusion, you're going to answer this question. You know, the mass of the rubber stopper, we, we determined it to be, I don't know, 55 grams or something. We measured it. It was actually 50 grams. So that gives us a percentage error of 55 minus 5 divided by 50 times 100. That would be 5%, something like that. Okay. Percent error. And then... And then where does that air come from? If there is air, um, uh, you know, in your conclusion, write a discussion on that. So anyway, I've talked too long already. So I'm going to stop here. So I'm going to, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hand out the whirly gig. Um, I'm going to, you know, what do you think we're going to need? Look at this equation. What do we need? Well, we know the mass of this, so we can calculate the tension force in the string. But to figure out the speed, we need to know the radius. Now, how are we going to measure the radius? Well, I'll show you that in a minute. But I'll, I'm going to hand out meter sticks. And time, how are we going to measure the time it takes to go around uh, one time? Um, I would use the stopwatches on your cell phone, so you can do that. But hey, measuring one period, if you just like go, it's going to be like this, start, stop. I mean, you're going to be slinging this thing around really fast. And remember, human error in measuring time is about one to two tenths of a second. So to minimize the percentage of error in your time measurement, I would do like 20, like do 20 complete circles. And then measure the time for that, and then like divide by 20 or something like that, and then you'll get a. Uh, that, then you're reducing that human error, that two tenths of a second. Now is to being divided by 20, so that gives you what one one hundredth um, off. So uh, I mean, it, it dramatically reduces the percentage error in your time measurement. Okay, so uh, your goal is to use the whirly gig. Using this equation, figure out what you need to measure, uh, and then calculate your uh, um, the mass of the rubber stopper. Okay. Good luck. That is all.